Lyndon Sluage with pipes like a church organ that shake the floor. Tremendous renditions of the national anthems. Tonight's starting goal is brought to you by your local New England Audi dealers. Experience Audi Quattro all-wheel drive tonight. Tuka Rask had the shutout victory last night in Boston, and he gets the nod again tonight. Craig Anderson, who had a cup of coffee with the Bruins in his last couple of starts. He has his shutout. He also has a sub two goals against average. Anderson's season on the whole has been a disappointment for Ottawa, a team which looks to bounce back from a 5-0 thrashing last night at TD Garden. Glad you can be with us on a Saturday night. The game is on. The Bruins are going to have to find a way without Seidenberg gone for the season and without Zdeno Chara day to day. Off the opening drop, we get a slash called right away. Now, this is bad. This is just a bad call. If you watch right from the opening faceoff, Jack, Neil and Marshan lined up against each other, and all they did the entire time was trade jabs back and forth. Marshan got the better right off the draw because he knocked the stick right out of Neil's hands, and the play continued along the wall. I mean, both players play a certain way. They both play a certain physical style. Obviously, Neil, that more pugilistic, big body contact. Marshawn, really the agitator. That's just a bad call right off the bat. 11 seconds in. You're going to call penalties there. Just call them both. Five different players have scored power play goals in the last five games for Ottawa. Cody Cece, the Ottawa native, skating right over the center dot, gives to Kyle Turris into the attacking zone. Bobby Ryan swoops through the corner. Matt Bartkowski gets a piece of the puck. It bounces loose. Ryan scoots it around to Patrick Weirkosh, who was a healthy scratch last night. Fires it on a deflection off the end boards. Ryan picks it up. Bartkowski takes a whack at him. Now Turris on the far side. Bergeron gets a piece of the pass and deflects it through the neutral zone. Gregory Campbell and Daniel Pae now the pair of forwards on the penalty kill. It's Boychuk and Bartkowski, the defensive pair. Torres glides over the Boston line, sends it for Clark MacArthur, banks it back to CeCe. To the middle of the line now, Weirkosh, the defenseman, throws it on Rask. It tumbles up into his pads, and Barkowski gets his gloves in the chest of Torres to shove him out of the way. He will give up some shots from time to time, uh, even as uh, talented as the Bruins are in the PK department this year. You will give up some shots, and if you give up bad angle shots, and uh, your goaltender knows where they're coming from, can control the rebounds. And even if there are rebounds, and even without Char and Seidenberg, the Bulls still have enough depth and skill to protect the front of the net. And that's how you have the kind of streak they have going right now, killing 17 out of 18 in the last five games and 27 out of 29 in the last nine. Joe Corvo. Along the line to Eric Carlson, his drive off the legs of Adam McQuaid, and McQuaid comes up taking a half step. I don't know if he toe picked or if he was hurting from the blast, but every time a defenseman gets in the way of a shot, you're going to hold your breath tonight. No, no, that was a result, I believe, of blocking the shot, Jack. And uh, when you watch McQuaid, almost gets down on one knee. You better make sure that puck's going to be low Yeah, when you get into that position. Benajad wins the faceoff. Carlson whacks the backhand down into the boards, and McCulloch digs it loose. McQuaid strong on the stick of Zabanajad. Now McCulloch brings it back to Carlson along the line. The one-timer, Corvo, and Rask makes the save. Still about half a minute to go on Marchand's penalty. So Patrice Bergeron against Zabanajad on the faceoff, and Zabanajad gets thrown out. 64% at the faceoff dot in the last four games, or last ten games, rather, and Bergeron adds to that with another faceoff win. Anything over 55% is just blazing hot. And you get up into that range where Bergeron is winning two for every one you lose. That is just an absolutely obscene number. Puck trickles off Barkowski, skates, it's loose along the goal line, and it stays out. I don't know how, but it stays out. Carlson's wrist shot deflects off 
of Bergeron and wide. Bergeron attacks the puck. McCollick takes it below the dot, swerves to the middle, gets between Boychuk and Bergeron. Bergeron off the boards. Marchand couldn't control the puck off the boards, but the Bruins have killed off the penalty, allowing three shots. Uh, pretty good athletic move by Tuka Rask in that pile up, Jack. Still able to track the puck and make a stop. David Krejci's shot goes off of Mark Mathot and behind the goal. Krejci to Aginla inadvertently. Aginla taps back to the wall. Now Lucic in the corner against Chris Neal. Cannot center it. Neal takes the puck, gets it through Aginla, trickles it toward Colin Greening, who spins it. It deflects up in the air. Neal muscles it over the Senator's face in the center circle. David Worsowski paired with McQuaid. McQuaid ahead to David Krejci. Krejci to Aginla into the zone. Greening on the check against Aginla, and here comes Zach Smith, but Worsowski on the angle to cut him off. Krejci flips it into the zone. The Bruins get a clean change. How important is it for the Bruins to get a good early rhythm? Uh, it's really important. you got a lot of new faces in the lineup. Give away. It's Nick Johnson, and he can't tap the backhand in. Spooner, some slick skating, feeds it past Matt Frazier. Yeah, this is Frazier, Spooner, and Johnson. And if you're a loyal P. Bruins fan and you've been going to the dunk in Providence, you've seen these guys a lot. And they are playing for the parent club together tonight. Yeah, and the fact that they have a history of playing together should give them a real good comfort level. And a guy like Matt Frazier's done the job. He's fit in almost uh, seamlessly on the right side, playing the off wing. Gets a chance to play the left side tonight. Bad pass by the Senators in their own zone. Johnson just uh, protecting the middle of the ice. Has that puck handed right to him. He tried to sell forehand and let that puck just stay out on the backhand and slide it inside that far post. Just missed. Bergeron jams for the faceoff win. Riley Smith. The circuitous route around the attacking zone. Off Marchand in front. His crew fires one in from the point. Took a rasp. Doing some magic along the goal line in a jam. Yeah, there's a big scrum going on right in front of the net. That puck is loose. It looks like an empty net. And puck's going in for sure. Corvo right in the crease all the way in from that left point position on the power play. Rass somehow able to track this puck and make a good athletic move with the goal stick and force that puck back out into the slot out of the blue paint. Torres wins a faceoff against Bergeron. Mathot. Spins away from Smith's pressure, sends the puck hard around the boards and out to center. Here's Torres. Krug poke checks it loose. Bergeron accepts the Boychuk pass, moves it quickly to Smith. Smith looking for Marchand. Marchand makes the corner, but Corvo taps the puck away. Corvo sprints to the corner, comes up the wall. Shoot little kick pass from MacArthur. So Torres to MacArthur, the drive and a leg save by Rash. Krug. Can't control off the skate. Torres cross ice. Too hot for Ryan to handle on the first go. Takes it on the carom. The wrist shot from Cowan at the point. A stick save Rask up into the protective netting. Well, real nice play by MacArthur on the left wing. Able to use those skates and not only complete the pass, but make a pass right to the middle to Torres in stride. Now you have speed through the neutral zone and numbers. That pass from deep into the Ottawa zone, able to catch the Bergeron line a little bit deep. Three on two, the result. Mac MacArthur got that return pass for a one-time, and the Rask had to get with the left pad. Claude Julian having a discussion with Ian Walsh, the referee, over at the Boston bench. The cause for the delay. Krejci wins the faceoff straight back. Barkowski. Wrists it up the boards looking for Pae. It does not connect and it'll be icing against the Bruins. And I still can't figure out why they blow it dead before the puck crosses the goal line. The players pass the dot, yes, but what if the puck sticks in the in the kick plate along the boards and never makes the goal line? Well, we'd have a face off at the center ice dot then. Well, I guess we would. <laughs> Hamlin's a advantage on. Times of adversity for the Boston Bruins. They will miss Dennis Seidenberg in all three zones for the rest of this season. They will also miss him tremendously off the ice. A really popular player. Always has a sunny disposition. Tremendous attitude. Plays the game the right way. 
And a guy that uh, after a power play, you know, if Krug and Char get the bulk of the time on the power play, let's say, you can always come with Seidenberg because you know the top offensive talent from your opponent's going to come if they're not killing penalties themselves. Daniel Pay out of a cycle. Orsovsky takes the Zach Trotman pass. Trotman, a Michigan native, spent three years at Lake Superior State. He's a big guy, 6'3", 219. He's got 79 games of AHL experience under his belt, plus last spring's playoffs. And he's had an interesting itinerary, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Assistant GM Don Sweeney went and picked him up. They got from Glens Falls. I think he had his passport with him. Oh, he, he drove himself, and then they took a car service the rest of the way. Well, Sweeney was the guy bringing Johnson to Warsawski. That's right. So many spare parts. Can you, can you imagine doing the travel plans for these guys? <laughs> but fitting in, working within the system. Chris Neal. Zach Smith. Saved by Rask as he denies greeting. Left to center, or right to center to left as the uh, Sens work the puck right across the line. Here's Chris Neal, swivels it across the front. Lucic takes the carom into the middle of the ice for Krejci. Corvo sizzles the pass, it caroms off greening. Krejci takes the gift, goes down into the corner. Mathot pokes at him and caves him in. That's Jerome McGinless, stick handling along the boards. Finds Lucic in a gap, the shot, and a save by Anderson. 13.26 to go, first period. The Bruins playing without Seidenberg and Chara at the same time. A sight not often seen. Claude Julien has not often faced this situation. Zdeno Chara has only missed six games previous to tonight since Dennis Seidenberg's acquisition only one time. On the final game of the 2010 season, April 11th at Washington, have both of those guys been missing for the same regular season game. The Bruins won that game at Washington, 4-3 in OT. Ryan Spooner, the Ottawa native on the faceoff. Joe winning it back. Now Zabanajad up into the neutral zone. McCulloch loses possession over the line. Tory Krug on the pivot from McQuaid, sends it cross ice. Fraser doesn't get much on the puck. It trickles down the wall. Weirkosh turns through the corner. Spooner slowing him down, but here comes Sabanajad. Now Weirkosh scores on the rebound. Tons of traffic. Conacher and Sabanajad working the puck through the neutral zone. Patrick Weirkos jumps in and pots the rebound. It's 1-0 Well, He can shoot the puck pretty good. But like most Ottawa Senators, it's been uh, a difficult sled this year. But it all starts on a quality breakout by the Ottawa Senators. They're able to beat the forecheck. They're able to generate speed through the neutral zone. And both defense are activated. Up in the play. CC coming late first. Weirkos coming late second. The puck finds him. And that puck had eyes through a lot of traffic low to the far side. So the Bruins have to play from behind. Marshan tries to get it through Carlson, but cannot. Marshan with some back pressure. And Bergeron Senator flips the puck in on Anderson. Yeah, you know, Wirkosh starts to play Jack, swings the net. He's getting a little pressure from Fraser. Second four check tries to come across, but uh, they use the middle of the ice. Then a jab was open, good speed through center. You attack the offensive blue line in the middle, and then push the puck wide, have a net drive. And you try to get your fourth and fifth guys up the ice to be involved in the offense. It's textbook, and it's productive. Patrice Bergeron gives it back to Matt Bartkowski. Chips off glass into Carlson's body. Bobby Ryan bounces it back to Barkowski. Now Johnny Boychuk for Boston. Banks it off the boards. Karam's off Smith. Cowan to McCarthy. Carlson has some open ice to the middle of the line. To Torres, the shot to flex off Boychuk's stick and out of play.
Uh, good recovery by Boychuk. Carlson takes that cross-ice pass, jumping into the play. Weak side defense, but he's in full flight. He zips a pass to Turris through the middle. Turris thought he had a chance to get a shot away, but Boychuk from that right deep position. He's gonna make that quick crossover, get that stick in a real good spot. Ajo, Condra, and the rarely seen Matt Cassian on the ice for the Ottawa Sens now. Weirkosh, the goal scorer, over to Cody Ceci. David Warsawski. Let's go Bruins. The chant from a few Bees fans who are here in the crowd. Warsawski, the long diagonal across the red line to Pae, and the play is ruled. Offside. Want to be the first to know when additional Bruin game tickets become available? Sign up to get last minute ticket notifications by email or text alert now at bostonbruins.com slash ticket alerts. You know, we mentioned uh, Matt Cassian uh, yeah. rarely seen. He averages three minutes and 42 seconds of time on ice per game. That is 790th and last among NHL skaters. But it's not the feet, <laughs> it's the fists. Orsovsky on the diagonal. Almost loses the puck to McCollick. McCollick can't get the puck past Orsovsky into the corner. Campbell takes a hard slash from Conacher across the arms to get the puck out of the zone. Trotman fires it through both corners. Caron on the near side. It wiggles up to McCollick. Banks it off the boards. Conacher into the Boston zone. Krug gets it out, and it comes right back in, courtesy of Joe Corbo. Krug with a quick couple of steps. Off the boards in the neutral zone. No icing as it deflected off an Ottawa player. Mathot sends it out left side. Neal swoops back to pick it up. Saucers the pass to Corvo. Gets only a piece of the puck and it dribbles around through the corner. Rask reverses. Corvo fires it right into Krejci's legs. Krejci backs it into space looking for Aginla. He can't catch up to it. Mathot is there. Aginla fires it cross out. Mathot through the check that sent Sidney Crosby into Pascal Dupuis two games ago. And that probably ended Dupuis' season. He had... A torn anterior cruciate ligament in that collision. And last, then last night, was it uh, was it Conacher that fell across yep. Seidenberg? Yep, late. Yeah, and we were saying it's a good thing it was Conacher because he's not a heavy body, but obviously the damage was done. Of course, 180 pounds being not heavy only in NHL terms. Matt Bartkowski accelerates out of the Boston zone. Ottawa conceding the front half of the ice, really. Nick Johnson taps the puck into the corner for Ryan Spooner. Saucers it back to McQuaid. He comes off the boards, flicks it into the crowd in front. Fraser giving the effort, but a good job by MacArthur to protect the puck out of the zone. He follows his own pass to the end board. Kyle Torres takes it, tries to pull away from Spooner, who jabs at the puck, plays the body, and that enables Krug to take it on a pulse. Fraser to Johnson, up to the red line, and the Bruins veer off for a clean change. Patrick Weirkosh, here's how the goal started with acceleration out of his defensive zone, but that pass into Marchand skates. CeCe rescues it, risks it wide stick side of Raz. Greening, big body on the far side, muscles drop, and Bergeron steals the puck and sends it back to the corner. Riley Smith sees the hit from Neal coming, dumps it to the near side, Marchand. Tries to get it through Greening, but can't. Some good zone time here for Ottawa as they get the forecheck going. Trotman, the dart to Bergeron, to Marchand into the attacking zone for Bergeron. The redirection goes wide. Weirkos chips it past Riley Smith to the far side. Marchand with the steal, flicking the puck in deep. CeCe on the pivot, and he skates it out. Zach Smith to Colin Greening. His shot goes off the legs of work for Sosky. Smith shielding the puck. Condra couldn't turn the stick to keep control. Gregory Campbell darting through a seam, unable to get away from Cassian's pressure. Condra loops one into the slot. Johnny Boychuk goes shoulder to shoulder with Cassian and gets run into the boards. And uh, we'll get a faceoff ruled in the Boston zone here. And I think a puck played by his high stick by Boston. 
8.03 remaining first period. Patrick Weirkosh is third of the season as Ottawa ahead. This is how the season ended for Dennis Seidenberg. Uh, doing the job back in his own zone, protecting the side of the net with good body position, trying to make a play. Conacher all over him. He was down momentarily. Got himself up off the ice while game action continued, but uh, that'll be the last time he makes his way to the bench this year. There's something that runs through this team about players getting up, even though they know it's not just hurt, it's an injury. Here's Pye with a great move to the front. He scores! Daniel Pye explodes up the wing, cuts to the middle, and goes underneath Craig Anderson to tie it. He brings that speed to the Bruin lineup up front, something that the Bruins would like to have more of. Pye provides it. And he gets opportunities because of his speed. Great individual effort. Once again, Carlson, we saw him get beat last night on the two-on-one goal in the third period. He's going to get beat again. Not even attempt to play the man in that situation, Jack. And Pai takes advantage of it. One hand little sweep around Carlson. Good hard wrist shot. Wrist shot's difficult for Anderson to read. Pai just puts it right through him. Eric Carlson currently minus 11 on the season. Marshand with a hard hit, the puck rattles around the front, here's Smith, pulls the trigger but the bullet wouldn't fire. Zach Smith down into the corner, Krug lines him up, gives him a bump, pokes the puck up the wall to Smith, Smith takes the hit from Neal to get it to Bergeron, he's got Marshand left, Marshand working against Weirkosh through to Bergeron, hits the brakes, the seam opens up, the pass off from the Fox skates. Bergeron cycles it for Smith, pulls the puck away from Neal. Neal gets it back, hard carom off the kick, Blake, and here comes Colin Green. Greening up to the Boston line, can't get it cleanly through Crew. Ottawa gets it in deep on the second effort, and the Sens change out. McQuaid up to the Boston blue line, McGinla back to Crew. Crew gets to the red line, the tumble muffin down into Cowan's corner. Allen brings the puck to Zabanajad. The sends spread out across the ice. Here's Conacher to Zabanajad. It caroms on Rask. He sticks it aside. McCulloch taps it to the corner. Conacher can't get it through Lucic. Lucic manages the puck nicely in his skates. Now Warsawski takes the Trotman feed and gives it back. Zach Trotman up to the red line. Sails one off the glass, but the play is offside. Yeah, Lucic in the zone just a little premature. You know, uh, Zach Trotman's last shift, Jack, the Bruins got a nice little rush to the neutral zone because of his initial pass from about the face-off dot. He found Bergeron open between the red line and blue line, and then Bruins got a little something going. You remember seeing Peter Pan as a kid and, you know, the whole thing with Tinkerbell and the light, you know, right? David Krejci just went down the tunnel. So uh, let's, uh, let's hope it's equipment. Mercy. Here comes Eric Condra, up to the red line. Trickles the puck into Warsawski's corner. He one-hands it to drop and he guns it around. Cassian unloading on Warsawski after he got rid of the puck. Cody Cece winds and drives. And here's Jordan Caron squaring off with Cassian. My goodness gracious, that's coming to a, the defense of a teammate. And this is a gross mismatch here. Cassian gets Caron down and then stops throwing with the man down on one knee. A real good response by Jordan Caron. Wasowski, undersized, under siege. Cassian, a green light hit on him. Try to stay within the rules. Good body contact on the forecheck. That's what he tries to bring to the lineup. You're going to get hit in those situations. But that is a mismatch on body contact. Elbows were down, stick was down. He's a much bigger man. There's no uh, initial contact to the head or anything. But Karan, being a good teammate, let Cassian know that that's unacceptable. Or it's acceptable, but it's going to get a response. Karan second and the fourth for Cassian this season. David Krejci is back on the Boston bench, so thank you, Tinkerbell fans. And the light is still lit. Caron's previous fight was on the 30th of October at Pittsburgh against Robert Fortuzo. 
from Halleck and Campbell on the faceoff. Campbell wins it cleanly back. Markowski up the board. CeCe wiggles it past Paye down into the corner. Boychuk playing without a stick. Zabanachad decided to be the hitter rather than the hitty. He got the shoulder underneath and lifted Boychuk right off his skates. Here's Weirkosh. The drive comes up high on Fraser. Good numbers back in the slot for Boston. And I think that's a pretty good indication of what the stick means to a hockey player in terms of leverage and balance. Cody Ceci, wobbling puck, and it fires up high on Rask. A score from a bizarro angle! Torres just hacked at a wobbling puck, and it finds its way into the corner. 2-1 Ottawa. Well, Conacher may have got a piece of this, Jack. He's a guy that rotated to the front of the net after the initial shot it was a funny one from outside the blue line. And Rask, all he can do is block it to the wall, and it still bounces. it. We made a little joke in the open about this might be in a street hockey game five against four because of all the injuries. Now, this is a street hockey type goal. He might have been playing with a ball in that situation. That puck was bouncing all over the place. Not sure if they're going to take a look at it or not to make sure that it's a good goal. But Turris, hand-eye coordination. Conacher with hand-eye coordination. And that puck finds the back of the net over the Glover Rask. Uh, Corey Conacher was the guy who got off to the red-hot start after the half-season lockout a year ago. And then at the peak of his value, Shoot. Tampa Bay GM Steve Eisenman, in desperate need of a reliable goaltender, wheeled him to Ottawa. There's a deflection by McCarthy just wide for Ben Bishop. So that's working out pretty nicely for Tampa Bay, which has managed to stay in the hunt despite the loss of Steven Stamper. A big game down in Tampa tonight, Jack. Montreal at Tampa. Turris with a bomb, and that one goes off the end glass. Smith to Bergeron. Gains the line back to Smith. He closes its offside. 4.52 to go. First period. Ottawa has not trailed tonight. Boston Bruins Hockey on Nesson is brought to you by the all-new Sierra. Designed and engineered by GMC. Incredible thinking in the form of a truck. Well, it's been a strange day with uh, all the happenings and the roster tweaking for the Boston Bruins, and the strangeness continues. A bouncing puck on the initial shot from the neutral zone. A bouncing puck that Turris gets a piece of and just directs it towards the Bruin goal. And then Conacher able to pick that puck out of midair, almost with the shaft of his stick. And the puck made its way right up under the crossbar behind Rask. Looked like he got it about six inches below the low hand on the stick. The thought to Corvo, to Neal, up to the red line. Orsovsky paired with Trotman. When the Bruins came to camp in September, frankly, I didn't imagine I'd be calling that defensive pair. Great his shot and a glove saved by Anderson. But that's the institutional depth that Peter Shirelli, Jim Benning, Don Sweeney, Kevin Dean and Bruce Cassidy in Providence have built. And that's going to have to find a way to bridge the gap for the Bruins until they find a permanent solution. Yeah, and another good pass by Trotman. This one from that right defense position inside his own blue line to David Krejci, who had swung from the center position up the left wing in an exchange with Lucic. And it leads to a quality scoring chance. A wrist shot inside the dot. Lucic just shot, handcuffs Anderson. The rebound, Anderson dives on it. Oh, good faceoff win by Boston in the offensive zone. Lucic in the shooting position. Good faceoff win right there by David Krejci. Lucic with a good hard wrist shot. You can tell how hard it was because uh, all Anderson could do was just try to get his chest protector on it and then try to find the rebound. Smith and Krejci. It's a stalemate in the circle. And Lucic has the puck come right to him. Bangs it back to Trotman. His pass comes outside the line, so Warsawski won't pick it up inside the zone. Neal comes up the wall. Greening walks in. Rings the iron, and the puck stays out. Mathot sends it around through the circle. That almost sounded like it hit the back of the net and came out. Didn't really have that ringing clank. But the referee with the washout signal right down at ice level. They will take a look at it at the next stoppage. 
Yeah, it looked like it hit the side of that post yep. that, uh, you know, with that mesh and everything. It's a late penalty on Ottawa right now with that contact in the neutral zone along the boards. But David Warsawski, Jack, he had the option whether to step in and play that puck yep. and take the deliberate offside. Opted not to. Not so sure that was the right decision. Almost backfired. Extra skater on. Johnny Boychuk brings the puck to Matt Bartkowski. Six skaters against five on the delay. Again, the top of the circle wrists it low. Krejci to again with the red hot power play in the wings. And the Bruins getting some extra man advantage time here. The punch out from Anderson on Boychuk's long wrist shot. And here comes the call. Well, Corvo's going to go to the box, but prior to that, little indirect pass by Neal to find Greening. Greening from the dot over the left shoulder, Rass. Clearly, the overhead will show you where this puck goes. Just outside that near post. And then uh, Lucic in the neutral zone trying to fight his way around Corvo. Corvo a little bit uh, too much body contact. Late. Awkward. And he'll go to the box. Seventh time that Milan Lucic has drawn a penalty to put the Bruins on the power play this season. Team leaders are Bergeron and Krejci, eight apiece. Trotman's drive on the one-timer, and the puck goes up over the glass, out of play, and maybe this is instructive as to why Zach Trotman got the call instead of people saying, how about Kevin Miller? Trotman already out there on the power play. Yeah, well, Miller's got that 10-game issue hanging over his head right now until the Bruins sort out what they're going to want to do in the absence of Dennis Seidberg. But Trotman's going to get some power play time. Has a real good shot from back there. Pretty good decision maker. Already highlighted two or three good passes he's made out through the neutral zone. So he's going to get a little power play time with David Wasowski. Bruins power play brought to you by McDonald's. And that changes the dynamic a little bit because now Riley Smith moves up to a forward position in the power play formation. Trotman carries in, rims it around here. Smith on the near side, accepts the bump from Conroe, who's an excellent penalty killer. Warsawski scoots it over to Spooner in front, looking for Smith. He gets twisted around and sent down on contact from Carlson. Smith sends the pass to Spooner, trying to get it through to Bergeron. Good stick position from Ottawa, and Conroe makes the clear. Yeah, Spooner just tried to force feed that one. Otto was closing on Bergeron in a hurry. Midway through the penalty to Joe Corvo. Krejci drops it to Krug. Krug's blast saved by Anderson, and he covers the rebound. Now the Bruins looking to get Lucic and Aginla in that power ride, but uh, Anderson got a good look at the drive by Krug. Riley Smith allows that puck to get back to the point. Little exchange out high. Wasowski able to find Spooner, and then Spooner's looking for Smith back door. Just missed connection. The Bruins on the power play went trailing 5 for 27 this season, 19%. Tory Cruz to Jerome McKinley, the rocket goes right into the pass of Craig Anderson. Explosive move by Krug to keep this puck in at the blue line, which working his way far to his left. But with his quickness, he was able to reach that puck, keep the play alive, and then finished it with a perfect pass for a one-timer. Up the stick of uh, Jerome McKinley. Corey Krug at Michigan State University won the reputation of a guy who came to work and make himself better every single day. Paraphrasing the head coach there, Tom Anastas, he said something along the lines of give me 20 of him and I'll win a national championship every year. Here comes Krejci down the wing, drops it for Krug. Krug to Fraser, high slot, the wrist shot goes off. Condra arcs over the protective netting and falls about six rows short of the mezzanine level. Well, the Bruins using the same play to gain entry into the offensive zone. If Ottawa's not going to do anything about it, keep going to it. And that's Krug with the puck in the middle of the neutral zone. Hit David Krejci in stride up the right wing boards. Krejci get in around the tops of the circle and just go indirect off the wall, right back to Krug on the follow-up. Rick, at intermission, uh, boys in the studio are going to look at Eric Carlson's defensive difficulties. I think it's an extra long intermission because it's hockey night I thought you were saying because there's a lot of data. Yep, well, you can draw your own <laughs> conclusion, can't you? Well, we saw Pye walk right by him tonight. Yep. Three shots on goal during the power play, which has just expired. Krug carries all the way down to the corner against Carlson. Gets tied up. They go skate on skate. 
Matt Krejci chases the loose puck. Jared Cowan over there. Krejci gives him a bump. And Gimla goes after it. Cowan knocks him off balance. And the puck trickles past Boychuk all the way to the Boston line. Into the final minute of the first period. Eric Carlson taking the puck in the Ottawa zone. He gives a better job to Clark MacArthur. MacArthur fires it off. Smith stick. Far side Rask with an explosive move to deny McCulloch the backdoor tap in. McCulloch and Barkowski. Barkowski gets the angle on him. Bergeron out to Marchand on the wing. He keeps body position. Boychuk clears to center. Conacher to Carlson. He risks the puck down to Barkowski's corner in the final 25 seconds. Boychuk. Rattles it off a stick. Bergeron shields beautifully from McCulloch. Gains the line. On the pass to Smith. Tries to curl and drag. Corvo punches it back out to center. Ten seconds to go in the period. Orsovsky to Adam McQuaid. McQuaid up to the red line. Off the stick of Zach Smith. And Brick, it was kind of strange not to see either Zdeno Charles or Dennis Seidberg out there for the Bruins. All things considered, not a bad adjustment by a cast of characters not necessarily used to playing together. Yeah, exactly right. And, uh, you know, that's not the Bruins' A game, but they did enough to certainly compete. And that's what you were looking for tonight. You wanted that simplified game to minimize the turnovers, hope that Rash stops everything that he sees, and just compete and see where it is at the end of the night. Well, they're through 20 minutes. Dale, and, you know, we haven't had to go to the flashcards yet. These guys seem to be getting familiar to us. Well, Boston Bruins Hockey on Nesson is brought to you by Toyota's official website for deals. Buy at Toyota.com. Buy the all-new Sierra, designed and engineered by GMC. Incredible thinking in the form of a truck. Buy Amica Insurance. Buy Infinity. Buy the Massachusetts Health Connector. Buy your local New England Audi dealers. And buy Ace Ticket. The Bruins are playing without Zdeno Chara, who is day-to-day, -day, and without Dennis Seidenberg, who is gone for the season with a knee injury for only the second time in the regular season since those two have been teammates in Boston. It's 2-1 Ottawa after 20 minutes of play. Jamie Erdahl has more on some of the guys who got here in a hurry. A story of planes, trains, automobiles, and passports. Jamie? Nick Johnson and Dave Orsovsky got their phone call last night to be in Ottawa tonight for the Bruins. They were in Glens Falls in preparation for a P Bruins game. They both had to drive back to Providence to retrieve their passports before flying from Boston to Ottawa, and they got to the team hotel this afternoon around 2. Now, shockingly, that is a less stressful travel day than Zach Trotman just had to endure. Trotman received his phone call after P Bruins morning skate. He must have had his passport with him, though, because he drove the nearly 250 miles between Glens Falls and Ottawa. Ottawa and hit the ice about halfway through the Bruins warm up here for his NHL debut. That's Jamie Erdahl at ice level where you see Doug Huda over the shoulder of Zach Trotman and with Andy Brickley alongside I'm Jack Edwards. We're coming your way from Canadian Tire Center along with our Nesson production crew. There's a look at Nick Johnson. who's maybe names that are not completely familiar to you as Bruins fans but these are guys who attended training camp. They've been in the system. They understand what's expected of them. First period summary brought to you by your New England Ford dealers. So, Brick, what do the Bruins have to do in the second period besides remember the names of the new guys? Well, I'll try to build off the good things that they did do in the first period. We mentioned at the end of the first 20 that it uh, you know, wasn't their A game, but they're going to find a little bit more fluidity to their game, a little bit more consistency, some better execution. But again, I will reiterate, it's all about competing right There's now. There's a holding penalty if ever I've seen one. And Patrice Bergeron continues to play at a level few can match. Joe Corvo to the box. Second penalty of the night for Corvo. And the penalty for uh, holding in the neutral zone on Lucic in the first period. He gets angled off by Riley Smith. And then the good lift of the stick from behind by Bergeron. And Bergeron is trying to pivot and attack the net, create a quick two-on-one, and all Corwell can do is reach out with the free hand. So we have seen a penalty at 11 seconds of the first period and now at 15 seconds of the second period. Krejci, Lucic, Fraser, Krug, and Aginla. Well, if Lucic is going to work the front of the net, I'd like to see him get a little closer to the top of the paint. The Bruins have had some shots, 
from out high, but not enough traffic with their man advantage. McGinley stumbles. Now Zach Smith has a two-on-one working with Condra. Back for Smith and his skates. He scores! Short-handed goal! It's the fourth shorty the Bruins have allowed this season, and it's a two-goal lead for Ottawa. It looks like the Bruins are going to make a goaltending change, Jack. A two-on-one shorthanded. Again, luck gets bumped off. Balance can't maintain balance. The two-on-one, the result. Smith takes that good hard pass. It's in his feet, and that's a tough read for Rask. Because that puck's in his feet. He doesn't know where it's going to end up. It ends up on the back end, and that's a heads-up play by Smith, just firing it hard along the ice, low to the stick side. It beats Rask. It's a difficult goal to give up in the situation. You get the early power play in the second period. You're only down by one. You're looking to get this game even or start the period off with some good offensive momentum and rhythm, and you give up a shorty. Johnson will make his way in now to the Bruin goal. It is not the fastest goal against from the start of a period this season. That happened in the third period of the game on October 24th when the Bruins hosted San Jose. Patrick Marlowe scored that one. But uh, this may have a significant impact on the rest of this game. So Tuka Rask allows three goals in 20 minutes and 29 seconds of action. When Rask has allowed more than two goals this season, he's just one in six. Now we move from Boston, 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 Keeps it in, but only for a moment. It's another two-on-one coming up ice. Condra sees the play's going to be offside along with Peugeot when he sends it back. Watch the thought. Long pass up to the Boston zone. Krejci tosses it forward. Matt Frazier picked off by Mathot. And Condra fires it all the way down the ring. Yeah, Bros are just making it far too easy on the Ottawa penalty killers right now. Not enough jump, not enough decision-making when it's supposed to be made. Spooner fires it wide on the glove side of Anderson. Warsawski along the line. The one-timer from Trotman and another save by Anderson. Smith goes into the corner. Spooner gets buried on Cowan's check. Cowan's a big boy. He goes 6-5. Here's Trotman the shot. Stick save. Anderson rebounds Spooner right along the goal line, but all the way out. Warsawski. In front for Bergeron, he redirects off the high glass. Spooner jamming in the corner. Carlson sprays it all the way to the blue line and out. Five seconds to go on Corvo's penalty. Orsovsky to Riley Smith. One shot for Boston during the power play. And Ottawa scores a shorthanded goal to open up an insurance lead. Trotman banks the pass ahead from Paye, and it's going to be icing against Boston. Smith's eighth of the, eighth of the season from Condra at 29 seconds of the second period, changing the complexion of this game. Yeah, the one shot the Bruins got the man advantage was when uh, Warslavski was able to find Trotman for a good hard one timer. Trotman was able to work his way to uh, you know, the option of taking the one timer, collect it, and work his way closer to the goal. So, Bruins need to do more with that man advantage. Yeah, you don't have Soderberg off one unit, you don't have Char on the other unit. That's going to affect him a little bit, but you still have enough good personnel to do more with that man advantage. Certainly not give up a short. Daniel Pye with speed looking for Caron in front. MacArthur goes wing to wing. Ryan turns the stick, here's Turris down past the hash marks, leaves it back for CeCe off Campbell's skates. Turris gives it away to Barkowski. Barkowski skates it to safety, now Caron up to the red line, taps it past CeCe, they rule no icing right away. Weirkosh back on. Cody CeCe takes the space, gives to Kyle Turris, he swerves to get out of the way of Bergeron. Weirkosh gains the line, whips it cross ice for Zach Smith. Smith pulls up against Barkowski, pokes the puck loose to the corner. Ottawa wants the chain. Patrice Bergeron bounces it through the seam. Smith knocks it down, gains, gains control, but his pass a little too far forward for Marchand. Boychuk bounces the puck cross ice. Johnny Boychuk leading the Bruins with 
eight minutes of time on ice in the first period. Colin Greening against Smith at the half boards. Greening tries to set it middle. Smith gets locked up with Barkowski, and the puck trickles into Chad Johnson. Nesson wants you to enter for your chance to win the Arena Cross ticket giveaway. Ten winners will each receive a family four-pack of Gold Circle tickets to the Arena Cross event at the DCU Center in Worcester on Friday. Visit Nesson.com slash Arena Cross to enter. Just to clean up a little bit of housekeeping here. Brick mentioned uh, that Kevin Miller had the 10 game thing hanging over his head. As an emergency call up, the Bruins could use him for nine games and send him back down to the American League without having Miller go through waivers. With the quality of his play, it was a fait accompli. Just presumed that if they kept him up for 10 games and sent him back down, Ryan missing wide on a snapshot that there would be about 20 teams interested in the services of that guy. And so because of numbers, perhaps a reason he's staying down. Torres flicking it into Johnson's pads, and he'll take the face off, and things get a little contentious in front of the Boston goal. Takes me a long time to do the laundry. <laughs> a pretty good battle uh, down deep. Ryan able to spin off a couple of times, make that short little pass to Turr. Turr is just outside the crease, just kind of funnels it at the direction of Chad Johnson. And then uh, you can see some of the emotions in the Bruins getting a little frustrated right now. A little scrum happened right at the top of the crease. Picture tells a thousand words with the disgusted expression on Tuka Rask's face. Tori Crew backhands it off the end boards and squirts past McQuaid. Sporter to McQuaid, rattles around for Nick Johnson. He drives it out of the zone. Bergeron hard against Zabanajad, and that keeps the puck moving for Boston. Zabanajad back, banks the pass to Eric Carlson. Carlson works his way into the neutral zone. The pass into Zabanajad skates. Move to the near side. Johnson up into the neutral zone. McQuaid, D to D to Tory Crew, up to the red line. He hammers it off the end boards. And Anderson has to block it from getting in front. Bruins changing out. Savannah Jod forward for McCulloch. Now Zach Trotman in his first NHL game. Off the stick of Conrad, it sails into the corner seats about 12 rows high. He's looked good. Yeah. Good energy for a guy that had a difficult time getting here. Missed half the warm-up or then some. And, uh, you know, obviously pretty pumped up to get uh, the call to the National Hockey League. But uh, he's looked comfortable. He's looked confident. He's moving the puck. He's jumping into the play. They're using on the power play. His shot has been accurate on goal. And for those of us who followed the career of Andy Brickley of Melrose, Massachusetts, anybody picked in the 200 who appears in an NHL game has a warm spot in our heart. Got that right. Where'd you go, 231? No, 210. 210? Yeah, 21, 21 teams, 10 rounds. The same number. The same number. Well, remember that, Zach Trotman fans. Might win you your favorite beverage in your nearby tavern someday. There's Trotman working it over to Warsawski. Paye turns the puck down into the corner. Craig Anderson taps it over to Cece. Right up the middle. John Gabriel Pajot. Cassian's drive hits a leg and goes back to the Boston goal. McQuaid extends the stick. Corvo reverses. McQuaid takes it on a pose. Pajot stops McQuaid with the body shot. Condra back to Mabot intentionally wide, but it takes a crazy bounce away from Zach Smith. Campbell swoops back in support of Barkowski to take the puck away. McQuaid goes right past Perron and it comes back into the Boston zone. Smith holds, waits for traffic. Blocker saved by Johnson and it bounces down into the corner. Campbell right in front of the Boston goal. Pae using the triangular support of Barkowski. He loops its center ice. Corvo knocks it down. Campbell keeps it moving for Pae. Corvo gets a piece but can't clear the zone with it. Mathot goes north and south to Zach Smith. He pulls up, goes cross corner with the dump. Barkowski snaps it back to Truck. Pulls it off the end boards. The pass out of Bergeron's reach. Smith taps it into a crowd. And Carlson just flicks it down into Boston's zone. 
Drops from Banks for Barkowski. Cross ice. Smith steps over the puck and feeds Bergeron. He yells at cross corner. Here's Marshan. Smith following, but the Bruins can't maintain possession. Torres saucers the puck forward for MacArthur. He wrists it past Johnson's reach. Krug back on it. Big hit from Bobby Ryan. Green light and Krug behind the net. Trotman hard off the boards. Carlson waits for it. Snaps it in one motion into Bergeron's legs. But it's a turnover. Bergeron trying to sneak Marshan up ice. And there's the risk reward from Eric Carlson. Here he comes over the line. Fakes the shot. Takes it now. And Johnson makes the save. But now Carlson's caught on the wrong side of the puck. A little fortunate that Boston's forwards are at the tail end of a shift and it's the second period. They'll take the safe dump in. Lucic could have been called for a holding Zibanejad as he turned him around, but they let it go. Now Lucic angles down on Weirkosh. Orsovsky racing for the puck but can't get to it. Zibanejad against McQuaid. He hammers it off the end boards. Hits the metal apron into the goal and comes around to Aginla. Aginla up the wall. Krejci can't clear the zone. Konica runs into Lucic's poke check. Pajol spanks it off the corner wall. David Krejci. Through the neutral zone. And it goes for icing against Boston. Don't miss Frozen Fenway next Saturday at 4 p.m. Merrimack and Providence will hit the ice. Followed by Notre Dame against B.C. Limited tickets are still available by visiting RedSox.com slash Frozen Fenway or by calling 877-RED-SOX-9. It's the 2014 City Frozen Fenway, and it's live on Nest. Eric Condra, two-time All-American, four years in Notre Dame, finishing up in 2009. And there is Condra hammering it off the corner boards. Lucic gallops through the neutral zone, goes toward Mathot, hits the brakes. Lucic drops it off to Warsawski, fakes the shot. The cannon from Boychuk rattles around the front. Johnny Boychuk just firing away as the Bruins provided some nice geometry, starting with Lucic's speed. Yeah, speed into the offensive zone, drive, force the D-back, pull up, hit someone coming late. He found Warsawski. What a great sell by Warsawski as if he was going to tee it up, and he found Boychuk. A better option for the one time. Seven shots on goal in the last five periods for Johnny Boychuk. Two of them tonight. Corvo snaps the backhand around to the near side. Colin Green trickles it out to the red line. Boychuk gets the puck back into the attacking zone. Greening takes Corvo's hard pass. Cranks it around through the corner. It pops up for Neal. Now Greening, another big body, but he skates into Boychuk. Greening pulls the puck away on the kick plate. Turns one way, then the other on Spooner. Here comes Barkowski to give him the forearm shiver. That knocks him off balance. The puck lies in the corner. Barkowski finds Boychuk. Off the boards, getting it out safely. Carlson back to pick it up. The Bruins change out their forwards man by man. Gregory Campbell over the boards. And now here comes Paye and Caron. Conacher closes the shot. Blocker saved by Johnson. The puck up and out of play with 10.06 to go. Second period. Ottawa up 3-1 thanks to Zach Smith's shorthanded goal in the first minute of the second period. There are over 300 TV hockey teams in Ottawa right now for a holiday hockey tradition, the annual Bell Capital Cup. Over 15,000 people are expected to attend the games and generate $2.5 million to directly benefit minor league hockey. Now, there are seven countries represented, and the U.S. is one of them. Eight states, Massachusetts is strongly represented. The Central Mass Outlaws play this afternoon, but they're also here tonight to cheer on the Bruins. Thank you, Jamie. Patrick Weirkosh intentionally wide, and the puck takes a dead bounce in that same spot in the boards where it did earlier in the game. CeCe's wrist shot, McQuaid with the block. Condra swerves, throws it middle, and McQuaid gets a leg on that. Weirkosh slaps the puck down through the corner. IA controls, finds a little space below the goal line. Campbell chips it back to Pae, gets the puck to come along with him, although it's tumbling. Caron risks the puck off the end boards. Now it's Cece banking it off the far side, and Con returns into the neutral zone. Cassian bounces it wide of Johnson. He knocks the puck down for Tory Crew. Quick on the turn, feeds Campbell ahead. Campbell moves around Torres, who didn't keep his feet moving. Caron with forechecking pressure. 
Carlson gets it over to Cowan, to MacArthur, to Torres. And Torres has to regroup back to Carlson. Carlson north and south to MacArthur, who loops it down into Barkowski's corner. Barkowski goes up the board. Smith turns it middle, and Ryan picks it off. Ryan against Bergeron. Now Torres back of the goal, tries to reverse, and Barkowski plays the body. Bergeron stops MacArthur. Torres gets it back from Barkowski, saucers it all the way through. Cowan fakes the shot, now drives the tip by Torres on the doorstep, but it goes wide. Boychuk works the puck methodically out, cross ice pass. Carlson with a good read, steals it in the scene, three on two here. It's off the leg, but now Carlson's caught on the wrong side of the puck. Can he get back in the play with his great speed? Marshan closes the shot, save Anderson, and the thought hammers it off the end boards. Riley Smith to Marshan in the slot. Slap pass in front, Smith turns, and we're going to get a penalty against Ottawa here. Was Smith actually denied a scoring opportunity? Yeah, was it Anderson, the goalie, that got the penalty? Yeah. Berkshire Bank rewind coming up just 30 seconds from now. Anybody who's on the ice at that time can serve it. Of all the players that Ottawa coach Paul McLean had from home to select, he put Eric Carlson. Eric Carlson, the former Norris Trophy winner, in the box. Take note, voters. Here's a Ginla. And Anderson stops him at the doorstep. I mean, it is unimaginable that Shea Weber would serve that kind of a penalty for Nashville. Unimaginable that Drew Doughty would serve that kind of a penalty for Los Angeles. Absolutely unimaginable at any point in his career that Chris Pronger would have served such a penalty. But here's Carlson. Now again, though, with another chance, but he fires it wide. Well, it was a real good shift again by the Bergeron combination, and uh, it was Riley Smith that took that frost ice pass for Bergeron. All he has to do is maintain his balance, and he's got a real good chance to score a goal and cut into this 3-1 lead. But the stick chop by Anderson upends him. That's why he got the penalty call. What are the difficulties in voting for a Continental Award in a league with 30 teams? Is that people tend to pick up stat sheets. And there is no game that tells more lies with statistics than hockey. You have to watch them play. Bergeron taps it back to Orsovsky, and the puck tumbles out to the neutral zone. The NHL's leading goal scorer is uh, deep in minus territory, by the way. Ovechkin has uh, 30 goals this year, and what is he, minus 14? Yeah, he's got 12 power play goals, which gives him 18 even strength. What are they, 720 goal scorers in the league right now? Yep. I think Patrick Schopp, who had... Uh, Patrick last night. Yeah, 30 game last night. I think he's got... Uh, he plays the least amount of time of all the 20 goal scorers in the league this year. Yeah, this is just in. Chicago's good. <laughs> <laughs> Spooner goes all the way to the end boards. Bergeron brings it back to Trotman. The puck tumbles on him, and there's Condra again. Second time the Bruins try to use their points. The first time it was Hoski. That tumbled away from him, and now Trotman, same fate. Two opportunities for Ginla Jack, but the initial rushes back to back walk right in. Zero shots on goal for Boston during the power play. Lucic for Ginla! Third time's a charm, and the Bruins are back within one. What a pass from Milan Lucic, and a nice little tuck from Ginla to make it 3-2. Yeah, David Krejci carrying that puck into the offensive zone right at the tail end of the man advantage. It'll be an even strength goal. But David Krejci cut to the middle. Bring people to you. That opens up more ice. Out of sight, out of mind. Ginla coming down that right wing, just drives off that far post. Perfect pass from Milan Lucic, tape to tape. It had to be hard, it had to be accurate. And again, there were three quality scoring chances. All on that power play, and I'll call that a power play chance even though it was even strength. But a nice layup goal. Bruins doing what they have to do to hang around. In the uh, vulnerable minute, right after the kill for Ottawa. Gillow with four goals and an assist for five points in what is now a four-game point-scoring streak. 
Even when the goals were not coming, there was not a whisper of complaint about this sure shot Hall of Fame. Yeah, because of the style that he plays. He's a pretty complete player. He makes plays. He's not just, uh, you know, a shooter and a goal scorer. He defends. He can kill penalties. He works the corners. He takes the body. He drops the gloves. What am I missing? <laughs> You know, it, it, it's reminiscent of that phrase that you honored that night that they raised the 2011 Stanley Cup banner. They played the right way, and Jerome McGinley plays the right way. All those Pee Wee players in Ottawa, take note. Model yourself after that guy. Nothing bad can come from that. On and off the ice. So the Bruins back in it at 3-2. Johnny Boychuk up to the neutral zone. Banks it. It bounces past Caron's backhand. Now what a good thing Caron did earlier in this game. Coming to the defense of a teammate willing to fight against Matt Cassian, who's basically out there to take the odd shift, try to get the puck into the attacking zone, and mostly fight. Yeah, and he's going in with his eyes wide open. He knows what he's going up against in Cassian, but he's willing to do it because it was the right thing to do at the time if you're willing to do it. There are players in this league not willing to do it. 5-12 to go second period. Jerome McGinley has a dozen. 12 for number 12, and it's a 3-2 game. 36 years old, plenty of tread left. Uh, his drive, his net drive is as good as it's ever been, really. And uh, first opportunity, just had his stick checked a little bit. Second one just fights through traffic, tries to go up high. That puck really wasn't flat for him. Still trying to make the right shot. And then again, the net drive. Find the open space, make yourself available. Get to the goal scoring areas. Great pass by Lucic. Bergeron line looking for a big shift here. Bergeron, as usual, wins the face off. The shot and a glove saved by Anderson. The sweet feet off the boards, and Bergeron was ready to shoot. Here's Riley Smith backing up. Fans on the shot. Pulls it away from Cowan. Finds Bergeron. He bangs it into the middle. Zach Smith gloves it down, and Carlson trickles it out through the neutral zone. What a nice rotation in the offensive zone by this line, and they use that high slot as an open. Beautiful triangle uh, set up by that unit and that one time by Bergeron. I'm sure if that caught a little bit of the outside of the post. Referee waved it off, so that's one of the indications. Yep. The washout signal says it hit some iron. Sometimes you hear them even better than you see them. I mean, right off the faceoff, the Bruins get into a nice setup play. Love that play where you just line up on the inside hash. Exactly what. Uh, Riley Smith was able to do. You line up on the inside hash mark. The minute you win the draw, you rotate over to the to the uh, far hash mark, and then Bergeron just drifts to that high slot. And you get lost in coverage and man-on-man -man coverage, and all of a sudden that passing lane is there, and the scoring chance emerges. Well, oh, wasn't that release by Bergeron reminiscent of the Marchand feed to Bergeron in Game Seven in 2011 against Vancouver that got the scoring going for Boston that night? Turris feeds right in front. And Krug is there, and he one-hands it off the board to get it to Riley Smith. Smith to Marshan. Marshan working against Joe Corvo. The Bruins changing out. Marshan delaying nicely so Spooner can skate onto it in the corner. And Mabot throws Spooner right off his skates. And Spooner recovers. Good sweep check by Turris to get the shaft down and keep the Bruins from completing the pass. And here's Turris zipping it cross ice to McCarthy. He rolls it into Boychuk's corner. Boychuk looks over his shoulder and sees Nick Johnson there. Johnson goes wing to wing. Fraser taps back. Barkowski hammers it underneath Sabanajad. Sticks Sabanajad up the wall for Ottawa. Cowan up to the red line. Boychuk back in deep, and Johnson's got to clear the zone. Go sends go. The champ from the crowd here in Ottawa. Conacher getting a piece of the puck. Johnson wrists it around through the corner. Carlson tees up, drives in a save by Johnson. I think it was tipped in the slot, and Johnson makes a nice save. Nick Johnson to the other end. Ryan Spooner, the quick release, but Carlson makes the block. Spooner in the corner. Carlson pulls it away. Johnson gets a piece of the puck. Carlson strong in the stick through Johnson's second effort, and then he dumps it in and veers off. Ottawa wants a change. Less than three minutes to go in the second period. Nick Johnson receives the long pass up ice from Zach Trotman. Lucic steps around Cassie. 
fends off CeCe. The pass just a little behind Krejci. And here comes Eric Condra quickly to the red line. Sizzles it around through both corners. Jean Gabriel Pajot gets it back from Cassie in the shot. Saved by Johnson. Toyota game break with Dale Arnold now. Henrik Zetterberg returns to the lineup tonight as the Detroit Red Wings visit the Panthers. First period, Pavel Datsuk holds at the blue line on the power play, finds Zetterberg in the circle. He nets the wrister for his 12th of the season. Jack? Dale, thank you. To Rask yanked after allowing the third goal of the game for the Ottawa Senators. A 3-1 lead for Ottawa. 29 seconds into this second period. Zetterberg coming back from the herniated disc. It hurts just to think about that. Corvo holding the puck out at the blue line. Rissa down through the corner. Krug bangs against Chris Neal. McQuay takes a swat at the puck. Greening trying to outmuscle Krejci. He shields the puck, feeds it to Zach Smith. The shot. Johnson makes a move off his line after he was deep in his net. McQuay past Krug's helmet. Looking a little old school here as he brings it up to the neutral zone. Big hit by Greening along the glass. Puck scoots all the way in deep into Boston attacking zone. Mathot absorbing the hit from Lucic. Corvo hard around the boards. There's Barkowski. Puck bouncing a lot tonight. It's pretty warm in this building. Again, the backing out into the neutral zone. Here's Corvo over the line, three on two. Boychuk reaches forward, pokes it to Krejci. He's got Lucic driving the net. Drops for Gidla. Strong stick from Torres to keep Aguila from maintaining possession. MacArthur cruises over the line to Smith. He turns it, fires a save by Johnson, and a 65-foot rebound all the way to the blue line. 64, I guess, if we got the tape measure out. Uh, <laughs> Marshan can't work his way through traffic. Bobby Ryan says MacArthur in! Saved by Johnson! Mark that one down! Chad Johnson stopping Clark MacArthur, who could have made it a two-goal lead in the final minute of the second. Marchand in his own line. It springs loose. Marchand carries in. Here's Bergeron. The shot that flex off the stick goes straight over the crossbar. Now it's Warsawski backpedaling to the middle of the line. The tip in front by Bergeron, and it goes off the end board. Marchand to the far side. Smith taps back to Warsawski. Bouncing puck. MacArthur tries to pull on through. Smith stands his ground. Bergeron gets it off. Ryan skates. Ryan back to the neutral zone. Torres wiggles it all the way down the ice. That ought to be icing, and it is. With about 20 seconds to go in the period, Chad Johnson keeps it a one-goal game. Well, you need saves at the right time, obviously, and uh, this is one of them. Good strong move by MacArthur after the Bruins turned the puck over the neutral zone. He protected the puck well, under the stick move, backhand, forehand. Good positioning by Johnson, big time stop. Again, the Bruins giving up opportunities in the final minute when they've worked real hard to get themselves back into this thing, just down one after that early shorthanded goal really seemed to hurt them early in the period. Mark MacArthur had a couple of really good years with Toronto in 2011 and 2012. 21 goals and 41 assists in 11. Followed it up with a 20-goal season again in 2012. That, of course, was a real pest for the Bruins when he was with Buffalo. Hard player to play against. Final 10 seconds of the period, and this ought to drain the clock right out. 40 minutes without either Zdeno O'Chara who's day-to-day, -day, and Dennis Eidenberg, who is in the first game of missing the rest of the season with a torn ACL, and the Bruins still have a chance to win this one. Yeah, it hasn't been pretty, certainly, through the first 40, but uh, the thing that you're looking for is that compete factor. I think it's been there. They've made their share of mistakes. They needed to make a goaltending change in order to keep some kind of believability. They're where they need to be, and they've set themselves up to give themselves a chance for points here in the third. Dale are not going to break apart. This team is pretty tight. No. Brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Well, New Year's Eve against the Islanders, 7 p.m. on Nesson for game time. And then a home game against Nashville Thursday, a home game against Winnipeg, a matinee a week from today. And then out to the West Coast, go the Bruins. Alongside Andy Brickley with Jamie Erdahl at ice level and our Nesson production crew, I'm Jack Edwards coming your way from Canadian Tire Center in Ottawa. The Senators lead an undermanned Bruins team 3-2 after two. And this, by the way, as all school children know, is the 35th birthday of 
Nesson photographer Brian Brennan. What a handsome devil. Doesn't look a year over 70. <laughs> Let's fly to the bench for an interview with Brick and Bruins assistant coach Jeff Ward. Brought to you by Cape Air, your wings to 44 cities in the U.S., the Caribbean, and Micronesia. Book your tickets at capeair.com now. Jeff, kind of a crazy day with your roster and the challenges of, uh, of the guys you have in the lineup tonight. Does that mean there was a different message before this game? Well, I think just keep it simple. We've talked about it before. Um, they're playing the same system pretty much as we play up here in Providence. So I think the guys know exactly what they need to do in all situations on the ice as far as systems going now. It's just a matter of coming up and keeping your game simple, advancing the puck forward, and making sure that we're playing from a strong defensive posture. And if we can do that, the confidence uh, seemed to got a little bit better in the second period than it was in the first, and now we need to bring that momentum a little bit more again in the third here. Yeah, despite that shorthanded goal to start that second period, is the compete factor where you want it for your group? I think it, it's getting there. I think we can still be a little bit better uh, in terms of our battles and races. I mean, uh, this is a team that's a, you know, Ottawa's a team that's a physical team. Uh, they like to, you know, play the physical style just as we do, and I think right now we've got to up that a little bit. Uh, making sure that we're putting pucks into areas that we can get there, and when we get there, that they're winning the battles. And I think in the first period, we weren't doing that as much as we did in the second. So right now, it's about who's going to get that puck first and uh, make a play with it. If I had to put you on the spot and say, what's the one area you think that Ottawa is really vulnerable here going into the third? Well, I think we've got to get the puck in and work that back end. And I also think that uh, we've got to make it difficult for them to get the pucks up the walls on the way out. They're, they're breaking out an awful lot the last two games up the walls. And if we can do our job and seal those walls off, um, I think we've got a real good chance to turn some pucks and get some good scoring chances in the third. Well, a chance for a home and home sweep. Good luck in the third period. Thank you. Well, time on ice with team leader today, Chara, averaging 25 minutes on the bench, and Dennis Seidenberg a shade short of 22 out for the season. A forward, Patrice Bergeron, is at the top of the list. There's your value. Matt Barkowski pops the puck up. Chris Neal gloves it in front of the Boston cage. Game summary brought to you by your New England Ford dealers. Bill Corvo back to retreat. Bergeron tries to wheel it in front, but Chris Neal blocks it. McQuaid jumps up and whacks the puck across the attacking zone. The Senators ice the puck, and the faceoff back to the Ottawa end. Yeah, and on the season, David Krejci is the leading forward time on ice guy yep. for the Boston Bruins. Yep. But uh, when you're in need of that defensive game without your horses back there, and Charles Seidberg, I said, no wonder Bergeron's getting more ice time tonight. 18.06 per game for Bergeron. Krejci clicking in at 19 minutes and 24 seconds per game. Mark Mathot turns the goal. Colin Greening hoists it out through the neutral zone. Bruins trying to take away the walls, as Jeff Ward told Brick just a few moments ago. Force them to make plays up the middle of the ice. Or if they do go up the wall, win those battles. Mark MacArthur slings the backhand around through the corner. And rattles around MacArthur, finds a piece of it. Bobby Ryan, Lucic checks him off the puck. Carlson shoots it into Krejci's legs, tries to wedge him off the play, and actually knocks him down, and Krejci's offside as Aguila carries the puck into the attacking zone, but David Krejci trying to force Carlson into a compromised position. Uh, nice effort, and started with Lucic being down deep body contact, which means David Krejci needs to rotate out to that left point position, gets right in the shooting lane, blocks the shot, and then it's just a battle to try to see who can get to that puck, and they let him play. As opposed to, say, 11 seconds into the game when Marshan and Neal were whacking away at each other. Well, the start of the second period. Right. <laughs> Corey Conacher up to the red line, chips it past McQuaid and darts all the way in behind Chad Johnson's goal, but Johnson plays it around to Marshan. There's still water pooled in the Boston zone. Warm building tonight. Marshan on the pivot to Bergeron. Bergeron takes it past the dot. Indirect Barkowski shot, save Anderson, had trouble fighting the rebound. Riley Smith battling on the end boards against Zabanajad. Bergeron gets a stick in there, but Zabanajad wiggles it loose to McCollum. McCollum powers up the right side, sends the puck ahead for Conacher. Barkowski tries to tear his stick loose from Conacher. Smith can't control. McCollum, the big body, comes out of the corner. Smith 
knocks him down against the boards. McCulloch right back up, and there's Bergeron on the doorstep to deny McCulloch what would have been a good scoring chance. Torres on the pivot, ripping it away from Marshan. Marshan gets the stick up in the hands, and he's going to go. Hooking is the call. Well, it took a little bit longer this period. Uh, what, almost two and a half minutes or something. <laughs> But it starts with Marshall in the neutral zone, trying to cut back into the middle. Now he's trying to get into the middle of three Senators. And that's an easy back check for Turris. And that little bit of stick work. Going to send Marshall to the box. Going shorthanded early here in the third. Ottawa 0 for 1 on the power play, but some good looks. The Sens had three shots on their first man advantage of the night. Turris MacArthur, the sniper, is Ryan. Cody Cece and Patrick Yurkosh, who has a goal tonight. The skaters for Paul McLean's Ottawa Senators. Gregory Campbell and Daniel Pye are the penalty killing forwards with Matt Barkowski and Johnny Boychuk, the opening defensive pair on this penalty kill. Al Turris hammers it off the corner boards and rattles around all the way back to MacArthur at the left point. His drive goes right sailing past Ryan. Weirkosh, the defenseman, down in the corner, and Pae wiggles it loose for Barkowski's clear. Yeah, nice little chip pass there by Pae. No panic. He knew he couldn't get pivot. He clear the puck himself. So a little chip pass back to the defense. Caron and Bergeron paired up front with Krug and McQuaid, the penalty-killing defenseman, and Ottawa's offside with 117 to go on the power play. Now, once again, the Bruins structure in the neutral zone real good here in the penalty kill. The two forwards swinging back to the outside. The 2D working their tandem in the middle of the defensive blue line. And uh, with a good gap and a good back check, forces the offside. Group back to McQuaid. He risks it hard off the dasher. About an inch from going into the Ottawa bench, but it rattles around. Well, here comes Eric Carlson. Carlson at the center dot off McQuaid's skate, and it's an easy out for Payet. Carlson feeds it forward for McCollum. Corvo past the dot. Zabanajad rotating. Carlson with a lot of space. Wrists it right through the slot. Nobody home. Corvo banks it. Gets it back from Zabanajad. The wrist shot with Conacher jamming the rebound. Off the pipe and out. Zabanajad with a clear shot at the top of the goal, but he rings it off the stick side post. There was some confusion in the neutral zone that time, and that's why the Ottawa Senators were able to walk into the offensive zone and finally get into their set. Zabanajad wrists it hard around through both corners. McCulloch on the half boards. Krug jamming away. McCulloch tries it down for Conacher to Zabanajad below the dot. It's off McQuaid, but it bounces right to Corvo. To Carlson. Rips the pass back to Corvo. Tees it up the drive. McQuaid with the block, and the puck goes to the boards. Bergeron up, but not out. Zabanajad seals it off. Conacher taps it back to Corvo. He walks into one. The blast blocked down. McQuaid is down on all fours as the Bruins break it up ice. Three on two. Paye closing in front. Oh, just past the post. Carlson intercepted the pass intended for Bergeron, and the puck deflected just wide of the goal. Orsovsky along the line. Trotman's wrist shot intentionally wide. The Bruins change out. McCulloch taps through the neutral zone. Now, Corvo Jack had all day. He tried to improve his angle, get closer to the net. Finally teed one up, and McQuaid just stood there, almost like he was daring him to shoot him. But he took the shot, McQuaid just stood there and took it. What a shot block. So as of the moment with McQuaid in the pain management period, we can see him down in the tunnel. The Bruins' five healthy de defensemen are Johnny Boychuk and four guys who a year ago you might not have heard of unless you follow the Bruins and the prospects that they have down on the farm. Neal stick handling along the goal line and Gidla turns the puck back to the wall. The others, of course, being Barkowski, Krug, Orsovsky, and Trotman. Chris Neal always on the hunt. Milan Lucic center circle against the green to Krejci. Curls and drags and zips it wide on the stick side of Anderson. Cassian to Cowan. Krejci with the angle and the effort. And Bartkowski takes the loose puck. Proved to Bartkowski. He'll take the space here. Bartkowski on the diagonal. Charges up the off wing. The wrist shot kicked out by Anderson. 
Condra up to the line, but not out. Trotman back to Spooner. Spooner tries to go against the grain to Nick Johnson. Johnson taps it into the corner. Now Matt Fraser along the end boards. Fraser reaches over Pajot and almost connects on a centering pass. Ottawa muscles it out to center. Cassian rolls it in toward Johnson. Jad Johnson to Tory Krug around to Zach Trot. Yeah, that's Bartowski's strength, Jack. The skating ability. Skated to open space, and he made a good shot. Intended for a rebound, got it. Trotman tries to wrist it off glass, and it sails up into the stands. Adam McQuaid has returned to the Boston bench. Tough set. Well, Adam McQuaid doing the job defensively. Both he and Bergeron trying to get in that shooting lane when Corvo tees one up. The shot gets beyond Bergeron, but not McQuaid. And you can see it stunned them a little bit, but uh, the price you pay, the sacrifice that you make, the commitment that you make to get the job done, especially in the absence of key guys on display with Adam McQuaid. Warsawski through the slot. The drive scores! David Warsawski's first NHL goal is a giant one! The Bruins come back to tie it! Mobility on the back end. They get it, guy like Tory Krug. They got it, Dougie Hamilton, Bartkowski. You got a taste of it last year, particularly in the playoffs. Well, David Warsawski brings the same elements. Skating ability. He attacks the offensive zone. He opens up on the wide side. He's looking for options. Do I have a pass? Do I have a play to the net? I'll just put it on goal as hot as I can, short side, and he just rips it past Anderson over the glove. Marchand and Neal whacking away at each other on the near side of the face-off circle. That's how the game started, Jack. Boychuk fires one in on Anderson. Corbo absorbing the hit from Marchand. Here comes Neal. The shot off Morsovsky's stick. Greening on the far board, spins it to the corner. Boychuk back up the wall. Greening wins the puck battle against Marshan. Boychuk takes on Greening, smacks the body. Riley Smith there, but here's Neal trying to wiggle it in front. Warzowski sweeps it away. Corvo wrists it off the end board. Greening picks it up, throws it right into the crease. It's loose. And Warsowski jams it to the far side. Corvo's shot and a leg save by Chad Johnson. The Bruins clear it down the ice. And change. Boychuk gets an assist on Warsawski's first career goal. Corvo risks it all the way around. Torres in the corner. McQuaid pops it to Baye. Risks the puck forward to Campbell. The puck tumbling a lot here. Campbell bounces it down into the right wing corner. Jordan Caron sees Cowan there and takes him on shoulder to shoulder. Here's Campbell in support. Baye whips it right across the goal mouth. MacArthur one hands it. Can't get a pass. McQuaid. Now Carlson accelerating out of the zone. Here he comes. Eric Carlson flying into the Boston end. Goes to the corner. McQuaid lines him up. Carlson dodges the hit. MacArthur turns and wrists it. It bounces all the way through. Carlson still in the left wing corner playing the rover. Slides it for Torres. It's off the skate of Bartkowski. Bartkowski backhands it up the boards. Cowan tees it up. The drive save Johnson. The rebound squirts all the way to Paye. Paye can't thread the needle to Caron. And Ryan takes the Krejci line onto the ice now. Rierkosh up to the red line. Jerome McGinley shields the puck, but McCulloch takes it away. Rierkosh, Cece, Zabanajan. Too far forward for McCulloch. Barkowski control. Markowski backhands it into the body of Boychuk. He just whacks the backhand up ice. Savannah John off the end board. Cece starts it out. Lucic gets a piece of the puck. McCulloch muscles it ahead. Conacher, the water bug in the corner. Savannah John, the no-angle shot. Krejci gloves it down. It bounces past Boychuk. Conacher got his sticks, and Boychuk skates. McCulloch, the one-timer saved by Johnson. The thought closing and Johnson holding the short side. The thought the defenseman in the corner. McCulloch holds it on the end boards. 
Zabanachad tries to turn the puck middle on a fancy backhand pass. Kronecker to Mathot, though, one-timer. Zabanachad spins it wide of the goal. Lucic looks ahead, takes the hit from Zabanachad. Krejci gains the line. Lucic the trailer into the gap. It rattles off Corvo. Again, the off is skated in. What's the ruling on the ice? Oh, I think he got it with his backhand, Jack. I think he found the puck right on the blade of his stick, and I thought he threw it in with his back end. And if it counts, it will be two goals on the night for Aginla. And in the 90-year history of the Boston Bruins, they never have had eight consecutive games with a player scoring two or more goals. But this would be two for Aginla. Well, it looks like he gets it with his skate first, but uh, did he get it with the stick before it gets into the goal? Puck's going to find his way to that left skate. And then he does not get the backhand on it. So they will take a good look at this one. Is there a distinct kicking motion? That's what needs to be determined because it goes off that left skate. Boy, that's a tough call. The signal on the ice was a good goal. Well, he definitely moves the left foot toward the puck. The question is, is he directing it into the goal? Yeah, boy, that's, <laughs> that's a nice push pass in soccer. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you watch a lot of replays, uh, you know, when you watch games around the league. I've seen a number of goals like that counted, but I've also seen right. a number of goals like that taken away. Right, that's a tough judgment call in Toronto. That was a crazy play, and it's been a crazy day. That's been the theme, I think, given what the Bruins have dealt with as far as their roster. Uh, the Conacher goal was a crazy thing. Took a Ras getting pulled. That's a little crazy. The guess here is they overturn it. What do you think? Uh, for the sake of conversation, I think they're going to keep it. Not a boy. Because <laughs> you're almost always right when, we're, <laughs> when we differ. <laughs> I will say this, though, that uh, Ottawa has upped the ante the last two or three shifts, and uh, Boss got a little scrambly in their own zone. There's some coverage breakdowns. Uh, you know, that's when you need a char to Seidenberg out there to sort things out, calm it down, control the play. Ian Walsh, the referee, will make the announcement. The call on the ice was no goal. It went to video review. It's confirmed. No goal. Sure looked like the referee behind the goal line pointed into the net. Pointing into the net, yes, <laughs> exactly. But it must have been no goal when they got together yeah. before they made their way to the penalty box. Yeah. Well, again, it definitely turns that left skate in the direction of the goal. The puck goes off his stick. At first blush, I thought he might have got it with the stick on the way in when it popped up into the air, but he did not. And after uh, close examination and review, we're tied at three still. Well, of all the leagues that have introduced video replay, the NHL has gotten it more right than any of the others. And if you watch the incredibly slow progress of some games in other sports, you admire the work they do in Toronto. They have gotten it right. Lucic gains the line. Again, the straight ahead. Krejci driving toward the net. Torres with back pressure takes the puck away. Torres has had some very good defensive moments for Ottawa tonight. McCarthy slings the puck down through the corner. Chad Johnson on it. Draws the pressure and gives the puck to McQuaid. He's got Lucic straight ahead. Nick Johnson changing on with Ryan Spooner here. Johnson fires it into CeCe's legs. It bounces down to the end board. CeCe angles off Johnson. Conacher feeds it forward to Zabanajad, who had a good shift last time out. Bartkowski intercepted Weirkosh on the angle. Zabanajad out of his own zone. Flips the puck ahead. It bounces past Conacher, who holds off Trotman. Trotman muscles him. Puck goes off. Zabanajad skates to the near side. Barkowski upended by Zabanajad. Fraser lugs it up and out of the zone. Here comes Spooner over the center circle. Right side for Johnson off. Spooner skates. It goes to the end board. Fraser goes in there on the jam. He gets knocked down in a collision with Weirkosh and CeCe. Fraser hops right back up. Spooner trying to angle the puck off the kick plate. Fraser gets it in deep. 
Rear cost controls. The Bruins want to change out. Bergeron and Marchand come over the boards. Zabanajad strokes the puck all the way behind Johnson's goal. He turns it over to David Warsawski. Up the wall for Marchand. Wing to wing to Riley Smith with Bergeron in the middle of the ice. The backhand sticked aside by Anderson. Now Zach Smith around the boards but not out. Tory Krug wrists it down the wall. Smith with a stick lift on the thought. So Boychuk can take it. Fires it in. It goes off the post. Anderson can't find it. And Marchand unable to put it on goal. Krug wrists it toward goal. Marshan right across the goal mouth. Past Mathot. All the way to Riley Smith. The diagonal back to Boychuk. Snaps it down to Marshan. Fends off Cormo. The diagonal to Krug. The shot. Bergeron going for the tip, but it sails cleanly into Anderson's glove. David Warsawski at 6.36 of the third period. His first NHL goal has tied it up. Here's your handling characteristics at high speed. The Audi performance play brought to you by your local New England Audi dealers. Experience Audi Quattro all-wheel drive tonight. David Wasowski's first NHL goal. Love the little pump fake coming through the neutral zone. That creates that little bit of lane for himself to carry it. Not to be lost on the play. Bergeron cutting across the blue line. A little chop down on the stick of Zach Smith. That also helped open space to that right wing boards. And also that uh, nice little open up. And would admire that too in Warsawski's game by opening up and keeping the puck in a shooting position as well as a passing position gives you options. Two little big men being traded. Vladimir Sabotka, who has really found himself at home with St. Louis. They just love him there. Ken Hitchcock calls him the conscience of the team. Mark MacArthur hits the brakes trying to shed Riley Smith. Tory Crew. Flips the puck along to the near side. Marshan gets the shoulder on Carlson, and he goes down. Carlson pops back up, finds the puck, taps it back to the point. Lions drive, blocked down, but the Bruins can't make a break out of it. Krug against Torres in the corner. Bergeron up the boards for Smith. Forward to Marshan. He takes on Carlson. Marshan. Carlson pokes the puck to the corner. Marshan gets underneath and gets possession back. Carlson gets the puck to wiggle toward him. Carone. Up the boards, and the send's clear. Remember the save Chad Johnson made on Clark MacArthur to keep it a one-goal game. Here's Barkowski on the long diagonal skate. Fires it on Anderson. The rebound tumbles loose, but he covers. Tonight, following Bruins coverage, join Adam Peller and Billy Jaffe for Nesson Sports Today, presented by People's United Bank. They'll have more reaction to Dennis Seidberg being lost for the season and an in-depth breakdown of the importance of securing a first-round bye for the Patriots. Stay with Nesson for the latest in sports tonight after post-game coverage. Ajo and Campbell on the faceoff. Campbell wins it back to Bartkowski. He's got McQuaid on his right. Intentionally wide, and there's Campbell at the post. Swings it into the middle. McCollum. Couldn't make a clean clear. Caron hard to the corner and down goes McCollum. Caron was totally committed to hump the puck there and he keeps it in the attacking zone. Campbell extends and whacks the backhand down. Here's Pye with a two step. The shot saved by Anderson. Caron looking for the rebound. And Anderson covers. The Bruins have raised their game. Uh, great hit by Caron. First he went in with the stick chop down. That little they knocked the uh, stick out of uh, Mahalik's hands. And then he finishes with a solid body contact. And now the forecheck is on. Good rotation. High ends up with a loose puck. Able to keep his balance and then get some pretty good leverage to get a good forehand shot away. But it all starts with the body contact down deep by Jordan Caron. Krejci, Gidlo, Lucic, Trotman, and Borsovsky on the ice for the Bruins. Lucic is shot! Sails over the top. Borsovsky into the zone. McGinley tags up to get back onside. Corvo, Mathot. Bounces it wide of Chad Johnson. Zach Trot. Off the boards around for Krejci. Trickles it forward for Lucic. Lucic against Zach Smith. Smith with a good angle. Lucic gives him a whack in frustration. Lucic tees off on Mathot who gets rid of the puck and gets his skates off the ice so he could better absorb the hit. Again, little Lucic, wing to wing to Krejci. Krejci holds off the boards. Again, picks it up on the off wing. Greening with the stick check off the side of the goal. Now it's Krejci. 
The diagonal to Trotman, his blast saved by Anderson, back to Trotman, his blast tipped and goes wide. Corvo spins it to Mathot, he turns away from Krejci's pressure. Chris Neal on the near side. Kyle Turris snaps the puck through the corner. And Johnson lifts it past Turris, it comes to Marshan. Marshan hoists it center circle. Cowan knocks it down, but it's off Ryan's skate. Here's Marshan stealing it, going over the line to Riley Smith. The shot and a save by Anderson. And that rebound, not sure if Anderson meant to do it or not, but it went to an area where Marshan couldn't get the second chance. Smith gathers the puck in the backhand. His pass goes off Cowan's skate. Marshan to Smith, steps right in front. The puck loose, and it tumbles to the near boards. Bergeron to Krug, can't find it. Here's Bobby Ryan, leading goal scorer for Ottawa. He scores! Michel Cormier had his arms waving something off here. I'm not really sure why he had his, his washout position there. Uh, potential offside because uh, Bobby Ryan did not have possession. He kind of fumbled it when he got near the blue line. If that's a possibility as to what you're talking about. Tough luck for Tory Krug at the offensive blue line. Just can't corral this puck. Yeah, that's what you're looking at. Nearly offside for Bobby Ryan. Had a little trouble handling the puck. It's behind him a little bit. If you're in full possession, you can actually go into the offensive zone backwards, backwards. if you want, yep. you know, as long as you have full possession. But he, that wouldn't be deep full possession because he's fumbling with it in his skates. But uh, he stayed with it, and a goal scorer is finished. Very simple. Pull it to the backhand with leverage. Conacher behind McCulloch. CeCe's blast. And sticks to the pads of Chad Johnson. 4.19 to go. A full-hearted effort from Boston. The Bruins have got to do it one more time to get even. 4-3, you score. The Ottawa Senators on the strength of a Bobby Ryan goal. Jack, this is what you were talking about when you saw the wave off. Is this onside? That puck's going to be completely in the offensive zone. One skate in the air, one skate planted in the zone. Tough to call at uh, breakneck speed, but uh, you could certainly make an argument that that play was offside. Ottawa four, Boston three, 419 to go. And I don't deem that full possession. Barkowski caves in MacArthur. MacArthur springs right back to his skates, feeds Turrence the shot, saved by Johnson. What an effort from Clark McCarthy. Now here's Barkowski threading the needle to Campbell over the line to Caron. The snapshot deflects off a stick and goes well wide. Paye tries to get it back to Barkowski, but Ryan, the go-ahead goal scorer, sends it back to center. Caron unloads on Ryan. Here's Turris. Paye with back pressure lifting Turris's stick. Barkowski off the end boards to McQuaid. Matt Barkowski. The Campbell line changes out. Krejci Akinla. And Lucic eventually will come over the boards with three and a half to go. Go sends go, the champ from the crowd. Trotman wheels it past the Gidlin. Greening back to Cowan. Eric Carlson. Offside. Bruins won 5-0 last night. They have not led this evening. Well, you knew it would be an easy game. Uh, certainly Ottawa was challenged given the way they performed uh, in the second and third period after a pretty good first period when Boston wasn't at their best. Rask had to be real good. You knew they'd be a stronger push back here on home ice. A little bit more confidence. They beat the Bruins this year here on home ice. They've been challenged by the coaching staff and one another to play better than they did last night. So he expected it. And with the Bruins roster issues, you expected this to be a tough game. It has been, but the Bruins have hung in there. They've competed. Johnson Orsovsky, trouble from Zach Smith. Our Gimla goes back to the goal. Condra gives the Gimla trouble. Condra brings it back. Mathot to Condra, the shot. Blocked down, bounces in the slot. Again, the punts to Lucic. The play's offside. On Tuesday night at 6.30, start your New Year's Eve with Nesson.
and join Dale and Barry when WB Mason presents Bruins Face Off Live. They'll preview the matchup with the Islanders, discuss what's gone wrong for the Isles this season, and have the latest injury news with the Globe's Emily Benjamin. Check it all out and more Tuesday at 6 30. Bergeron, Marchand, Smith, Barkowski, and Boychuk for Boston. Tourist Ryan, MacArthur, Carlson, and Cowan for Ottawa. <laughs> Bergeron wins the faceoff, clean into the Boston bench. Bergeron, 16 and 8 at the dot. After that one, they just lost. So Bergeron, 64% in his previous 10 games at the faceoff dot. And that percentage is going to go up based on his 66.7% tonight. Think about, think about the sequence, Jack. Yeah. You know, the calls that uh, didn't go in the Bruins' favor. The Aginla, yep. off the skate, mid, deemed a uh, kicking motion, no goal. And then the onside offside breakaway chance for Bobby Ryan. The 82 game regular season is a tremendous test to determine the teams that are worthy of competing for the Stanley Cup. And the Bruins are going to be tested dearly in the next few weeks. Matt Barkowski quickly to Ryan Spooner on the turn with Pie. Spooner goes to the goal line, wraps it around. Fires on Anderson, who makes the save. Oh, when Ryan Spooner opens up one leg at 10 o'clock, the other at 2, all kinds of things happen. Yeah, he, he looked and he thought he might be able to slide one back for Paye initially once he entered in the offensive zone. Didn't think it was there. Didn't think it was his best option. He kept looking for somebody to come down that slot. Just never materialized. Otto did enough defensively to discourage any place to that slot area, but no Bruin really charging the middle of the net. And then finally, just wanted to put the puck on goal. Chad Johnson with a glance over toward Claude Julian. David Krejci, Milan Lucic, Jerome McGinley, Johnny Boychuk, and David Warsawski, the five skaters for the Bruins. Zach Smith to take the face off for Ottawa. Up there with Colin Greening, Chris Neal, Joe Corvo, and Mark Mathot. Stalemate on the faceoff, and a hand pass ruled against Boston. Yeah, no. Yeah, the Bruins are saying if the hand pass is against Ottawa, there's an automatic penalty off of faceoff, and it is. Yep. The Bruins are going to have a power play with 148 to go. This uh, right up the draw, Jack. Yep. There it's it is. That uh, new rule, right? Yep. Relatively new rule. Mark, Mark Savard turned it into an art form, <laughs> and then the league decided that's not a good idea. That's such an art form we're interested in. <laughs> exactly. Now Smith wants to argue. You argue all you want. You go to the box. Now see if the Bruins can use a call in their favor to tie this hockey game with their Pope Powell play. Boston's power play 0 for 3 with four shots on goal tonight. I don't know if this is a declared timeout or just a uh, slow change. Well, the Bruins are rolling out six players, Jack, so they're going to get their goaltender pulled. They're going to be aggressive with a minute 51 to go and the man advantage. They're going to go six on four. Auto with the advantage, if you want to call it that, but they can ice the puck with the open net. Lucic, Riley Smith and Krug out at the blue line. Lucic holds with Bergeron in the high slot. McGinley right in front of the goal. Krug. Great see the right shot on the left side, the long diagonal. Smith to Krug to Krejci. Krejci low for McGinley. Can't turn it on goal. Now battles Mathot. There's Bergeron in support. Up the boards, Krejci back to Bergeron. McGinley holds. Mathot, a physical defenseman. Making it hard for the Bruins to operate smoothly. Krejci taps it back to Krug. 1.15 to go in the game. Riley Smith 
to Krug in the middle of the line. Naginla's one-timer, he shatters the stick. Has a long way to skate to pick up the new lumber. Five on four here as Aginla gets the new stick and then comes forward into the attacking zone. Cruz, Smith, Aginla, the blast goes off. Conrad to the far boards. Lucic backhands it around. In the final minute, Krejci finds Riley Smith. Lucic's blast off of Anderson. Sky high rebound off the apron. And Lucic wins the puck. Smith holds on the boards. Bergeron shot with Aginla jamming, and Anderson makes the stick save. Lucic to Aginla, trickles the puck to Krejci. Krug fouls it off, can't clear. Lucic from Krug. Lucic to Krug to Lucic, the one-timer save Anderson. Riley Smith wiggles it to the corner. Lucic to Bergeron, to Krug, to Krejci, the one-timer, he heals it. Lucic holds in the final 15 seconds. Krug's wrist shot saved by Anderson. Exhausted skaters on the ice. Well, real good formation, good looks. They had some tough luck with their one time as Krejci kind of healed one. Aginla had one blocked. Aginla broke his stick on one. They did get the extra chance when the Ottawa Senators field failed to clear their zone. They got a one-timer from Lucic on one side. They just never got that second chance opportunity in close after the initial drive. Puck possession, the six on four, wearing down your opponent, the penalty killers, and then the final shot. Anderson, because of the height of the shot, was able to smother it. Get a much needed face off. Game report brought to you by the all new Sierra. That's professional grade. This afternoon, the Bruins learned that Dennis Seidenberg would be out for the season with a torn anterior cruciate and torn medial collateral ligament. Today, Ochara, just before game time, we learned, was day to day with an undisclosed injury. Carl Soderberg out of the lineup after getting banged up last night. So the Bruins have found a way to stay in it. And with 10 seconds left on the scoreboard clock at center ice. And the goalie pulled and a power play in progress. They have this last chance to get a point out of this one. Bergeron and Turris on the most important face off of the night. Bergeron wins it. Krug, the tap pass in front. Riley Smith, 6.2 now showing on the clock. I think they got to check the clock too for time, but what a well executed play. Bergeron with the face off win. A little touch pass by Krug to Riley Smith who opens up over on the wing. But Anderson was able to track the puck well. Not only stay square, but again, the Bruins not getting the benefit of a second chance. Will Turris just fall on the puck here? Bergeron on the draw for Boston. Bergeron wins it. Hickenlis, bomb! And it sails over the top. MacArthur cradles the puck. A full-hearted effort from the Bruins, but they come up short. Ottawa wins. 4-3. Auto able to capitalize on the mistakes that the Bruins made. Good luck, or I should say bad luck or mistakes, however you want to classify it. They were opportunistic. They scored just enough goals to win this one. You knew the Bruins had challenges coming in, but you were hoping they were going to take points out of it. It looked like they were going to when it was 3-3. Well, Dale, they fought for each other. They fought for themselves. They couldn't quite push over the equalizer, but it was a heck of an effort. Jack, we're still trying to catch our breath after that last two minutes. Coming up on Ace Ticket Bruins Overtime Live, we'll get reaction from the Bruins dressing room. Coach Claude Julian will go one-on-one -on -one with Jamie Erdahl, and we'll preview the New Year's Eve contest against the New York Islanders. Ace Ticket Bruins Overtime Live coming up next.